My lords and my ladies, it is my submission that when you look at the systemic issues arising and affecting the integrity of this election, should we even pay attention to the numbers which we are now being fronted? If the system was compromised from the beginning, the universe of the elections had been compromised from the beginning. That whatever numbers will come out of that universe of the election, the voter register, does not matter. And I do believe even the third respondent, if he was the one filing this petition, would raise the same issues that I am raising today. What should we do in regard in terms of my reliefs? I urge my lords and my ladies, the problems of IEBC and specifically the second respondent are systemic, as I've said. The court should consider the conduct of this second respondent, Wafula Chebukati, and Professor Gulie and Mr. Molu. The common constant, they were the only commissioners who were in the 2017 general elections. They are the only commissioners who procured the elections technology. And they are the only commissioners again today who are dissenting. They are the majority, minority commissioners who are trying to countermand a decision of the commission. Appropriate sanctions need to arise. In light of the disobedience of the court orders in Maina Kiai, the court was very emphatic on what is the role of IEBC and what is the role of the chairperson. Very clear. When he unilaterally ignores that court order, I urge this court to take that into account when making appropriate sanctions. When the same person in 2017, again, refused to accede to the orders of this honorable court in petition one of 2017, this court should take that into account. We can't be coming back to you every election with the same problem involving the same person. It is time that Mr. Chebukati is shown that the will of the people of Kenya is supreme and he must work within the constitution and decisions by this court. That's why we are calling for criminal sanctions and appropriate reports to the DPP. Why should the people suffer constant anxiety around elections that are being bungled when the courts have sounded themselves hoarse and loud on what is your role, what are you supposed to do, what technology to deploy, how to protect that technology, and he's not doing it. If you look at, PA, the, we've attached the PSC report, Public Accounts Committee reports, again, finds an indictment of the same person sitting in meetings where he's conflicted. Look at the KPMG report. The auditors are saying they are being given even the information requested so late in the day, on the 16th of June, for an, a, a, a register to be gazetted on the 20th of June. This was deliberate attempt to make sure that the election is compromised. Section 6 of the Elections Act required the register to be opened for inspection 90 days before the date, the notice of a general election. The notice came out on the 20th of January. The register ought to have been opened 90 days before the 20th of January for inspection. He didn't do it. He gave the auditors the report so late, but they still pointed out that your register has a problem, and he took no remedial action. He proceeded to conduct the elections in the way that he desired. What he ended up doing is what my grandmother, Sophia Magambu calls Nairobi Karafu, Pata Potea. Nairobi Karafu to me, at the National Tallying Center, it is, and we've averted on our feet of it, the national chairperson of the commission called both Raila Odinga and William Root. The whole day, nobody knew who the winner was. Even the commissioners didn't know the results because tallying had stopped.